to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance sport, country, and skate dress of your dreams. In today's video, we are talking about this awesome dress that I actually made. <laughs> so you get the inside scoop on that. Some of my favorite focal points are all of these points and how to create a contiguous design using a theme, like what we have going on here. Also talk about our focus will be on this mesh insert so that we can have the contrast of not only fabrics, but also shine and no shine. And then lastly, a before and after on this dress, because when I originally made it, it was a ball gown. <laughs> and obviously it is no longer a ball gown. So we'll talk about why Christina made the change and how her dressmaker had that come to pass. So if I'm Teresa Sigmund, then this is Christina Musser, and we're filming on location at her studio, Spotlight Ballroom, which is in West Sacramento. Uh, I'm the head instructor here, and we teach ballroom Latin and swing dancing both online um, and in person. And this type of dress you wore for your showcases, for your black and white balls, all of this, of course, pre-COVID. And this dress has actually been worn a lot. This is my favorite dress, actually. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to have you here. So this was originally a, a ballroom gown. It was nice and long. And um, I was doing some pro-am competitions with students, and I just kept getting stuck in it. Um, and it got to the point where I was so scared I was going to get stuck in it that I just stopped wearing it. Oh. Um, and so... Uh, another student of mine said, well, if you're scared to wear it, why don't you just cut the skirt? Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I was like, I, why did I never think of that? <laughs> you're a genius. So, right? Well, and it was mostly because I was like, I can't cut it, like that sacrilege. But um, I had a dressmaker cut it. She did a beautiful job mimicking the, the points. And she turned it into a Latin dress for me. And I love it. And I've been wearing it for Oh, 13, since, yeah, since 15, 2006. 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since 2006. Yeah. So actually, let's um, talk about that. If that's our before, you can see the photos here. And here's the after. This is a Chris Ann stretch crepe. And when I originally made this, it had two layers of fabric, which it still has the two layers of fabric. But when you have stretch fabrics that close to your heel, it is very easy. You'll see people dancing a lot and they have to stop and literally take the fabric off of their heel because it has gotten caught. So one of the things that I began doing actually after I made this dress, I started putting chiffon or georgette or some kind of non-stretch fabric underneath the stretch fabric. If, if you're dancing and you get your heel caught in it, it's just going to be, it's going to want to slide right out because it's slippery. If you're dancing and you have a stretch fabric, ah, there you go. So that if you do get your heel caught in it when you're using something that does not stretch as your underskirt, your heel can just slide right out of it. I teach this in the sewing school and now you know it because I, I think that really is a hazard because you want the look and the fit and the comfort of having a stretch crate, but not what it does when it's down around your feet. However, you wore this as a ball gown for so long, I think cutting it was a great idea because it completely changed the look and you got a new dress for almost no money. And I love that aspect. So I think it's really fabulous. So that's our before and after, which the dressmaker did a beautiful job of tying in the points. I actually really like this sleeve. This was the first, maybe the only time I made this style sleeve. It's just a, a raglan sleeve set in like a, a regular street raglan sleeve, just a slit up the middle and little bias tape bands holding the sleeve together so that it doesn't come apart. And love this. The points on it were originally to tie in with just this little accent element because as you're spinning and moving this little bit of fabric would move around and it mostly blends in until you start moving your dressmaker did a great job of continuing all of these points i think she did a fabulous job with that and of making layers here so instead of just cutting it off as one layer i really like the fact that she staggered it and left it to two so well done on that turn around so we can see the back please ma'am 
Christina has a fabulous bum. I love <laughs> love the way this fits her, turn sideways. So this, even as a smooth dress, it still hugged her bum. And when you've got a great tush, it's like you might as well show it. And this diagonal line really is fabulous on her shape because it draws, you don't just see just a round bum, you actually get the line of it kind of broken up by having this little dangle back here. So I think this is great. And yeah, your dressmaker really did a fabulous job with all these. I went in and originally it was probably rolled edged hem, which she did. A lot of stretch crepes these days do not fray or shred. So some of the more modern stretch crepes, you don't even have to roll edge hem. You could just come in with a nice rotary cutter and do a clean edge. Um, my, one of my other favorite parts about this dress is the contrast between shine and no shine. So we've got a perfectly matte Chris Ann crepe. And then on the other side, it is flesh colored lycra. I believe it's flesh colored. Yep. Of one layer of flesh colored lycra with pink mesh over it and then a ton of stones. And the reason that I like, as a dressmaker, I like to put flesh colored lycra underneath mesh areas when they're going to have a lot of stones is because it gives the glue somewhere to adhere to. So your stones will fall off less. Have these ever fallen off? They don't actually look no, like it. No, they haven't actually. <laughs> like maybe one or two, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. So a lot of that is um, because it's got the flesh. One, it's um, probably E6000 or may have been goop or a combination of the two. So that was the glues that I used. And yeah, they look fabulous. These, the big jewels, the big square jewels are sewn on as with the navettes. Yep, there's only three missing right there. That's pretty darn good. The dress is six, 2005 or 2006, I made it for Fonda. So when you back your mesh, it does a couple of things. One, it gives, like I said, the glues of the stone somewhere to adhere, and two, that it's not so scratchy on your body. Mm -hmm. Because a lot, for me, mesh just scratches my skin and I don't like that feeling. And then by the time you add glue that oozes through the holes of the mesh, then you have, it's really abrasive. So the lycra on that is a good tip for those of you who have sensitive skin or want more stability. There is a, um, an invisible or blind zipper tucked in over here. When you're getting in and out of a side zipper, you always want to hook first and then zip and then reverse that process. Unzip and then unhook. And that's true for all zippers actually, just to increase their longevity. Now that you've cut off the part that you liked the least, Mm -hmm. Are there any parts of this dress that you would want to change? It does have bracelets or armbands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bracelets. Yep. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to change about this? Anything that's comfortable or not comfortable? I love this dress. Like I said, this is my favorite dress. So um, I love it. The only, only thing I have is just that I've gained a little bit of COVID weight. So I yeah. feel like... I feel like the hips are showing a little more than they used to. Um, but other than that, no. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody feels your pain on the yeah. COVID way. <laughs> yeah, it looks really fabulous and has a ton of great design elements on that. And cutting it off was, yeah, fabulous. Love that. So yes, if you have enjoyed today's video, please share it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Go visit Christina online at spotlightballroom.com and check out, you teach what, Zumba classes? Yeah, we have Zumba, we have Zumba, we have Lindy Hop, we have ballroom, Latin, swing, fun, everything. All yeah. of that online or in person if you happen to be in the area. But it's nice to have somebody that's lively and cute and perky, but not like over the top. <laughs> and with, I mean, you've been teaching for a long time now. Yeah, I think I calculated it 2002. Yeah. I started. Yeah. yeah. So it's nice. So go visit our spotlightballroom.com. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for joining us for today. And again, share this with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Go to sewlikeapro.com, leave me your name and email, and I'll make sure you receive my newsletters and extra dressmaker tips that may not be in my videos. Also, I'll send you notifications about when my next design masterclass is happening. And I think that is it. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm a little out of practice because <laughs> I couldn't film for so long. 
But that's it. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you again another time. Should we be videoing? Yes. Okay. <sighs> I'm like going through where I am. <laughs> <laughs> like where am I? Where, what day is it? Who's president? <laughs> I can't keep track anymore. <laughs> the memory's going downhill. I'm like dying from asphyxiation yeah. from mask wearing. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. But never mind. I just, I just can't believe it. I remember the first time I was trapped in Colorado at the time, mm -hmm. and I, I had to go to Trader Joe's, and I walked in, and everybody was wearing masks. Mm -hmm. Of course. And I just started crying. I was like, I oh. never imagined the world coming to this. Yeah. It's pretty shocking. Yeah. 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 And then we look like we have duck bills. Right? <laughs> duck tails.